Hey there folks, Rel here. Today we'll be taking a look at the Infrared Night Vision Scope, or IRNV for short. We'll talk about the upsides, the downsides, and when or why you should ever use it. The topic may not be overly complex, but hopefully you'll still find some value in it. So the IRNV is a 1x optic available to most primary weapons for 30 certifications. Even though it's an Nanite Systems product, you'll still need to unlock it on each and every weapon you plan on using it on, even if you buy it with station cash. Infrared vision is going to highlight all allied and enemy targets within about 50 meters, making them white hot. And after that 50 meters, those targets will then quickly lose their intensity until they're basically as monochrome as everything else. After about 100 meters, things will become very blurry, very dark, and you won't be able to see much of anything at all. How far the scope will let you see is actually dependent on your graphical settings, which we'll talk about later, but this is about as good as it gets. It's also worth noting though that you'll still see triangles over spotted enemies at any distance. That said, the general purpose of the scope itself is to highlight enemies and flatten the contrast across everything else. With this optic come several distinct upsides and downsides that we're just going to lay out for you at the start, and then we'll bring in a little bit more into the abstract to determine how that'll actually impact your performance in game. So the pros are that the infrared night vision scope highlights all allied or enemy infantry except for cloaked infiltrators and VR training room targets. Allied infiltrators will still retain a tinge of color and heavy assaults will display the color of their overshield while it's active. You'll also highlight vehicles, max units, base and engineer turrets, but you will not highlight non-turret deployables. So your ammo packs, proximity mines, anti-tank mines, C4, motion spotters, shield rechargers, none of those get highlighted. While looking through the scope, in addition to being able to see more clearly at night, you'll also be able to see through all types of smoke, as well as certain particle effects created by various weapons and explosions. You also won't be able to see your own muzzle flash, even if you don't have a suppressor or a flash suppressor equipped on your weapon. And lastly, it has the thinnest crosshair of any 1x optic. The downsides are that, after 50 meters things stop showing up as highlighted, and a little bit after 100 meters things get extremely blurry and eventually stop showing up at all. There's also an activation time when the scope needs to be brought up and turned on. You can compare this to regular reflex sights that don't quite take as long to zero in. You will also not see cloaked infiltrators, but you can still see the shimmer, the sparks that fly from them, when you deal damage, unless they're running nano armor cloaking, in which case those cloaks no longer shimmer at all. It's much more difficult to see your own projectiles, which is important for adjusting your aim on moving targets. Since the scope is an overlay, it's also going to limit your field of view. And finally, there is scope sway, much like the default sniper rifle scopes. It's not as much because the IRNV is only a 1x optic, instead of something with a higher level of zoom, but it is definitely there. So to break things down a little bit further, here's how it can affect your performance. The biggest benefit of having InfraVision is target acquisition. The human eye can pick up high contrast targets much more easily than targets whose colors are closely matched, so being able to make enemies stand out like a sore thumb will ensure that you can deliver super quick. It's also extremely useful for picking out enemies through all sorts of visual distortion. So when explosions are going off, or when someone is in the trees above you, if you see even a sliver of that pure white, you'll know that there is a target there. Also, in a lot of cases, clearing this visual distortion will give you a target that you just would not have been able to pinpoint without the scope. People hiding behind crates with just the top of their head peeking out is a great example, or enemies on a staircase where the railing would usually make it difficult for you to land all your shots, that's another very, very common one. The downside to everything appearing pure white is that friendly recognition can sometimes be difficult. Also, if an enemy is standing in front of a vehicle, you'll have a hard time finding where the enemy is compared to where the vehicle is, since they're both going to be pure white. Something else that I feel is very important to take note of is that if you are playing on low graphical settings, with your lighting, your shadows, your particle effects turned off, you basically get the same sort of advantage as IRNV, since targets will stick out very, very easily. This in itself renders IRNV mostly useless for players who are playing on low graphical settings. And this is even before the very literal downsides you get for running IRNV in the first place. Since we're here, let's also talk about graphics quality real quick. 
When you're adjusting your visual settings, you have one that's called graphics quality or graphical quality. And if the setting is on high or ultra, your IRNV has much more range than you'd get if the setting were on low graphical settings. Also, another funny thing is that on Hassan, there's a kind of haze that washes things out, not even with IRNV, but just everything all the time forever. And if you turn on fog shadows, you'll get a lot more clarity in both your normal view as well as when you're looking down the scope of IRNV. Now, provided that you're playing on settings that don't look like a potato, here are some things you can consider. The first thing is that the sight has limited range, though limited should really be used with finger quotes because the 50 meters at which it highlights targets is the effective range of most weapons anyway, and between 50 and 100 meters you can still see targets, it's just going to be difficult because they'll blend in with the rest of the background. Dealing with cloaked infiltrators, however, can be somewhat difficult. If you pop them once, that'll be enough to make the cloak shimmer, again unless they're running nano armor cloak, but just as often you'll be falling back on your hip fire to put damage on cloaked infiltrators in the first place, and if you aren't using a weapon with reliable hip fire, it can sometimes screw you big. Beyond that, the scope's activation time makes it more difficult to use in close quarters where snap targeting is important. If two people run into one another, you're both sighting down on your weapons, you're at the disadvantage. Granted, this disadvantage can be mitigated by firing just before the scope comes up, but more commonly, you're going to feel a little bit sluggish, and losing sight of your target even for a moment is never a good thing. This is probably the biggest downside of IRNV, but there's also a disadvantage in the form of scope sway. As far as scope sway is concerned, this may not be as huge a drawback as it sounds, because you do have just a 1x optic, so it doesn't sway as much as a 6x, and also, if you are an experienced player, you're compensating for your weapon's recoil anyway. So the sway is going to factor into the movement that your hand is making while you're trying to put the crosshair on the target. And it's not as jarring as something like recoil. It's still detrimental, but also very fluid. Now, fortunately, much like a sniper scope, you can hold your breath by holding shift. And when your breath is held, there's no sway, therefore there's no downside. So if you're still with us so far, you may be feeling like it's both positive and negative to use IRNV, and it is. The night vision scope used to have no downsides at all, save for the scope's effective range. It used to sight in just as quickly as any other scope, it used to have no scope sway at all, and it used to be the only crosshair that was centered on the screen properly. Since it does have those downsides, and since other optics are in a much better place now, IRNV is not fit for each and every situation. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and if you have any thoughts or experience with the IRNV scope yourself, let me know what you think about it in the comments section down below. Thanks very much folks, we're all signing off.